Sure. <laughs> Great. Yeah, so Mike, when someone, when someone is so inside their story, because in that moment, that story feels so very real, what are they to do? What, how are they to, to really, because I can, I can see the illusion because I am very blessed to, you know, live in a degree of comfort. Uh, I think through the loss of a child, it's really woken me up. Um, so I can see the illusion of it uh, because I can feel the oneness. But for people who don't feel that in this moment, what can they do? How are they to break from that? Well, one of the most difficult houses um, where we face a lot of obstacles and problems in astrology is the sixth house. Okay. And this is also the house of debt and illnesses, diseases, these kinds of things. And okay. ultimately, the way to get out of that sixth house is to go back one house into the fifth house. The fifth house in astrology is creativity. So oh, okay. once we... Once we get creative, we try something different than what we've been doing. And that's the best way to pull ourselves out of that, is just to try something different. Um, I was speaking with someone earlier today who I'm not sure if they're out of work because of Corona or whatever, but they're out of work <clears throat> recently. Yeah. And so my advice was just try something different. The best thing you can do when you have no work and you want to be working, is try volunteering someplace, right? Find something that really moves you and, and give your time, your, 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 some, bring some space into your life for that. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Then you also feel valued. You also feel that there is a place for you in this earth. You're needed and valued, and I guess there's a lot to be said for that. Yeah, exactly. okay, volunteer. And... Um, and also, and creativity, so it could be anything like painting or anything, just do something to get that other part of your brain working, I guess. Exactly, exactly. Do something, try something different, something original. Yeah, right? I think people should probably try your astrology because honestly, from where I'm sitting, if everybody that was listening in were to learn about themselves through astrology and what the planets are trying to tell them personally and how they can work with the planet energy as opposed to against it, their life would surely be easier. Surely it's the shortcut to a, a calmer, simpler life. No? That's well, it's certainly, it's certainly a way to understand ourselves in this, uh, this incarnation we're living now. Yeah. And yeah. at some um, the other thing this fifth house, this creativity, represents, it represents intelligence, but it also represents mantra. This is the house of mantra, you can say. Oh, so I didn't know that. Another way to look at mantra, so we're going through the day and we're applying our mind to different things, to understanding things. In a way, this is a particular vibration. It's a kind of energy that's operating in the, in the higher mind, you can say. And so these kind of mantras, or even like, a, like you say, some creativity, some, some painting, is kind of, it's like doing mantra in a way, some dancing. That's a really good tip. That's a really good tip. So Mike, with mantra, you know, you can go to a transcendental meditation teacher and they can give you a mantra because they look at you and there's a download. But would you say that any mantra will do that you just happen to find one and you think, how would you choose a well, mantra? There's two ways to get a mantra. Um, one is through astrology. We can, astrologers can recommend mantra to people. Ah, oh, yes, yes, okay. And the other way is, yes, to find a guru, to find a teacher. I wouldn't yeah. recommend walking into a, into a transcendental meditation and say, give me a mantra. I would go there. Yeah. I would spend yeah. some time working with whatever, whatever mantras they're working with for some time and get to know that guru, that teacher. And once you have some faith in them, then they yeah. can give you a mantra as well. Yeah. And so those okay. are the best ways um, to get that. Okay. Um, so, so, so you wouldn't rely on Google for one? Pardon me? You wouldn't go to Google for one then? 
Um, well, I had my astrology guru gave me a mantra years ago. Um, oh, so it was wonderful. kind of a two in one. <laughs> has your mantra not changed as you've evolved? Has it, has it changed or have you still got the same, same one? Um, still the same one, but since that time I've started to work with other mantras as well and bring different okay. things into my, into my practice and a little bit of experimentation you can do as well. Um, yeah. Again, like I said, I mentioned earlier how it's very interesting when, when someone has a lot of self-knowledge already, I find it so funny because I'll recommend a mantra to them from astrology and they're like, oh, I'm doing that one already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. And do you, um, do you um, prescribe anything like uh, crystals or uh, any beads or... Do you, do you think that there, there's a resonance there too? Like you were saying to me, it's good to wear emerald. So do you... Gem, yeah. These gemstone therapies, I think, are also quite effective. Okay. Um, and there's different ways to do this. We can, we can wear one, and the one I usually recommend is to try to bring a more sattvic quality of an energy that's already good in their life is the okay. general way that these things are predicted. Maybe, you know. um, there's also another way of wearing it and all the rest of that in order to try to get rid of bad energies. But I think the best way to get rid of bad energies in our lives is actually to give those things away that represent that bad energy. So if someone is suffering, say, by Saturn in their chart, one of the best remedies for them is just to clean up their house and get rid of all the old junk, all that old stuff. Just give it away, throw it away, get it out of their house. And that'll really help to clean up that Saturn energy in their life. That's a really good tip. And somebody said, Mike, how did you know? How did you know that somebody asked the question that astrology was your calling? How did you know it so deeply? Well, because I was willing to give everything up in my life to do it, and I didn't wow. care. Um, and I really did suffer quite hard um, for a few years. And I said, no, I'm going to keep studying this. I'm going to keep on this path. And it wasn't it easy at all. Does it completely fill you? Um, astrology comes pretty close, but I, I have a... I study the astrology, I study uh, philosophy. Um, this thing connecting with the people is the big reason I started to study. It was one of the reasons my teacher recommended that I, that I start to teach, um, not just astrology now, but years ago I started to teach yoga and started to teach philosophy as well. As he basically said, anyways, if you want to have a social life, I recommend that you start to teach this stuff otherwise you're going to stay locked up in your room forever um and so yeah there's a lot of ways that these things help me to fill my life you can say um yeah that's wonderful i'm so sad mike because when we got cut off i don't know if i can then sit i don't think that video saves if we get cut off this one does because it's the last one, but I don't think the one before does. And I'm so sad about that. So what I don't want to lose the opportunity is to tell people that uh, we will, we've got Mike's details on our Instagram. And if any of you are interested in learning about your own chart, number one, Mike does do readings. And number two, you could look at taking a course to really deep dive into what your personal chart is about and what your lessons in this life are, what your learnings are, and where your growth opportunities are, where you can really flourish. And I think it's a profound gift to be able to give yourself. So now that you are not going out, nobody needs to go out and buy new dresses at the moment, and we, we're not going out to restaurants, this is damn good way to spend your money, I think. Um, you know, because only good can come of it. So I would really recommend that. And I'm really, really sad that we don't have the rest of the video, but we have this and um, we have you, our friend, Mike. And if anybody wants to contact you, they can. If anybody has any last minute questions, please do ask. And Inga, if you have anything, anytime, you, you can all go to Mike's um, account directly and uh, communicate with him. And 
all I want to say about astrology is that I, I consulted an Ayurvedic astrologer some years back, and it was excellent guidance for me to know that this was a time to just accept, to surrender that this was, this was my learning period and it wasn't going to be easy. And that's okay because it's out of that period that, you know, something good, something good would emerge, something more real would emerge and just sit with that pain. I think often we don't want to sit with pain and that's the problem. It feels so uncomfortable that we'll do anything to stop that pain. And if only we can sit with it, it will eventually pass, right? When will you be in India ne next? Mike is in Varanasi now. That's where we're speaking from with the power of technology. He lucked out during this virus to be sitting in Varanasi, chilling out. So, um, Mike, you're there, right? Um, I'm here. Uh, yeah, the question is, when will you be back in Canada? And I guess you don't really know, right? My visa is good now until uh, July. Right. I'm hoping by July there'll be some way to extend my visa and stay here. Um, so we'll see. Nobody really, you know, even, even myself, um, I can see some moving that's going to come up in my chart. How far away I'll go away from, the, from here or what foreign country I'll end up being in for the next few years is still up for grabs. But I suspect I'll be in India for, for quite some time. Um, nice. Yeah. Mike. Somebody just said, if you have, it's, hi Uma, so lovely to see you here. Um, Uma just said, if you have Jupiter and Saturn in your chart, is it good or bad? Well, this... And somebody wants it, to meet you personally. I'm sure you will meet him personally. And if you don't, have a Skype with him. <laughs> it's the next best thing. Yes, yeah, so is it good or this, bad? This depends on um, quite a few factors in the chart. But in a very general way, you can say... Jupiter expands whatever he touches, and Saturn is going to bring responsibility. So what's going to happen is the Jupiter's effect on Saturn can bring a lot of suffering in life. Saturn's, Saturn's um, effect on Jupiter is going to make you very serious about higher wisdom and knowledge and spirituality and these things. And so it can be a double-edged sword, you can say. And so it depends on a lot of things in the chart, which one, which side of that you're going to feel the most. And chances are you'll feel in one part of your life, you'll feel that side. In another part, you'll feel that other side. Uma, get a chart. Get a chart done. It's worth <laughs> it. <laughs> um, so thank you so much for your time, Mike. I, I really enjoyed it. I hope everyone's enjoyed it. And I'm sorry we lost connection there. So we can't put it all on Insta Live, but we can put the last bit. Yeah, Uma, it must make sense. And Uma, you've got that creative side and the other side, and it's a fine balance, isn't it? Anyway, um, as they say, if you want to get in touch with Mike, please go directly to his account and be in touch with him. Uh, it's a real blessing. And thank you so much, Mike, for your time. We really, really enjoyed your thank you. Thank you so much. Really nice talk you. Lovely yeah. talking to you, Mike. Good evening, everyone. Have a lovely evening. Take care. Bye, Bye Sophia. Bye, everyone.